Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about the poem on the religion of nature, written by Philip Freneau. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, so that the channel can continue to grow. So, this work by Philip Freneau is um, a very interesting work. Um, this poem is, is very fascinating. Uh, within this work, Philip Freneau is saying that um, that there are certain blessings, right? That when you look at nature, that the natural world, nature itself has a power within it um, that is kind of like mixed with virtue. That's that's mixed with mixed with um, you know the right things of the universe, and that ever since that we're children, this power, this this thing that comes from nature pushes men um, towards righteousness, push, pushes men towards doing things that are right. And he says that this natural religion, this natural belonging that, that comes from nature, if, that, if we would embrace it, if the world would embrace it, if countries would embrace it, it would lead the world into a bright path, this natural religion, this world religion um, that, that connects people um, to nature, that's from nature, because he says that, you know, nature um, blesses us naturally, um, that we have this, this natural blessing from nature, that if we get it from um, this, this power, this energy, this virtue, this righteousness from nature, um, that there wouldn't be any type of conflict, there wouldn't be any type of persecution, um, you know, when we're talking about religion, you know, religion, you know, there's there's many religions um, throughout the world. There's many belief systems um, throughout the world, philosophies, um, teachings, um, uh, ways of life that people practice. Human beings, not, over 90%, I would even say over 95% of human beings believe in something. Even if you say you're not religious, you might believe in ghosts. You might believe in, I don't know, numerology. You might believe in signs in the skies. Every single human being believes in some type of um, unknown or things that are outside of the realm of understanding or something that exists beyond, you know, human comprehension. So all humans, you know, at a, to a certain degree, we all believe that there's something more to what meets the eye. That that the world is more complex, more significant than it truly what than, than it truly is. You know, all humans. You know, uh, from like I'm a Christian. I believe that God exists. I believe that Jesus Christ is real. Exists. Like I believe in the spiritual world. I have my own belief um, in in you know the true God. So, but when we look at all humans. When we look at all humans, all humans believe in something. Throughout the world, we have Christians and, and you know, people, um, Jewish people, um, people who believe, um, um, you know, Muslims, uh, people who believe in Islam. Um, you know, we have Hindus. We have, you know, we have a countless amount uh, of of religions and belief systems and and, and paths and and life understandings. Um, uh, here, Philip Fresnel here, he's introducing something that's totally different. It, this doesn't connect to any type of existing world religion, but he's saying here that there's a natural power. There's this natural uh, religion that if we tap into it, that comes from nature, um, that pushes us towards virtue and righteousness, that pushes us towards peace uh, and righteousness. Now, you might say that, you know, you don't believe in this, but this is what this poem is talking about. And, and this poem, Philip Freneau is expressing that if we truly adhere to this uh, religion of nature, that it will push us to, towards a state of enlightenment, a state of peace, and a state where there's no more persecution. It's almost like he's saying that if we if we believe in the religion of nature, we, we, we can create heaven on earth. Now, personally, I don't believe in that. That's not my own personal belief, but as for this poem, that's what it's getting to. That that nature has this this system within it, this this power that it's it's kind of like an undefined power. But he says that this power pushes us, um, it blesses us, it gives us gifts, it pushes us towards virtue and righteousness. And if all men, all people, um, all countries would adhere to this type of power that comes from nature. 
well, then it would create a, a utopia that we would all be happy and content and there would be no persecution throughout the world. Um, so that's the poem. That's the religion of nature. Um, does it exist? Well, I, I, can't, I can't tell you that. But the poem says it exists. The poem says that's the benefits of adhering to the religion of nature. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's something that the poem asserts has always been around because it's been guiding humankind um, ever since there were children. So there's lots to think about here. But this is what um, this poem gets to in terms of deeper meaning and analysis. It's, it, ha it gives you a lot to think. It gives you a lot to wonder about the philosophy of this poem and if there's some truth to it. Um, or is there another state, another reality that humans can collectively reach that can lead us to type of a type of, of utopia, of, of peace, of a place uh, where there's no persecution. So that's the poem. That's what it's talking about. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.